This is part 95 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why and how a deadlock can occur in a multi-threaded program with an example. Let's look at a typical scenario when a deadlock can occur. Let's say we have got two threads, thread 1 and thread 2, and two resources, resource 1 and resource 2. Thread 1 has already acquired an exclusive lock on resource 1 and wants to acquire a lock on resource 2. At the same time, another thread, that is thread 2, has already acquired lock on resource 2 and wants to acquire a lock on resource 1. So in this situation, thread 1 is waiting to acquire a lock on resource 2 because thread 2 has already locked it. Similarly, thread 2 wants to acquire a lock on resource 1 and waiting for thread 1 to release it. Okay, so basically these two threads are not going to give up the locks that they are already holding on to. They are waiting for each other. So there is a deadlock. Let's understand this with an example. So we are going to make use of this account class. Again, this is a straightforward account class. We have got two properties for this uh, class, that is the balance within the account and the account ID, and a constructor to initialize those fields and we have a public property here, the ID property, which is going to return the account ID, and then a method to withdraw money and a method to deposit money. Here we are detecting the amount from the balance, and here we are adding the amount to the balance. So straightforward bank account class, basically. And then we have another class here, that's the account manager class. Okay, so this class is the one that is responsible for transferring funds between two accounts. Okay, so we need to have a from account and a to account. And notice the type of the from and to account, it's of type account, the class that we have seen on the previous slide. Okay, so we have got a from account, to account, and then the amount that we want to transfer. Okay, those are the fields that are present within the account manager class. And then we have got a constructor here, uh, basically to initialize these class fields. And the important thing is the transfer method. So this is the method that is going to withdraw money from the account, I mean, from the from account, and then deposit to the to account, okay? Now, before we are doing that, we are actually locking both from account and to account, okay? But then look at this. First, we are acquiring a lock on the from account. And let's say, you know, after we have acquired the lock on from account, we want to do some processing there, okay? And then maybe that processing, let's say, it takes it's going to take at least a second. After that, we are going to acquire a lock on to account. And just to simulate that processing, um, I have made the thread that is executing this piece of code to sleep for 1,000 milliseconds. That's one second. Okay, and then it's going to acquire lock on to account, and then it's going to withdraw money from the from account and then deposit to the to account. Okay, so this sleep here is the potential cause for the deadlock, you know, to to occur. Okay, so basically the resources here are the from account and the to account. Okay, and the threads we are going to create them in the main method. So that's in our next slide. So within the main method, what we are doing, first we are printing this message, main started. And notice that we are creating two instances of our account class, okay? So account A has got 5,000 uh, within the account, that's the balance, and account B has got 3,000. Those are the account IDs, 101, 102, all right? And then we are creating two account manager uh, class instances, account manager A and account manager B. and uh, so for account manager A, we are specifying account A as the from account and account B as the to account. And we want to transfer 1000 from account A to account B. Okay, so we are creating a new thread here and we are delegating the transfer, you know, the execution of transfer method um, to that thread. And notice that here we have given a name to the thread as well. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to make use of that name. Okay, and then here we're creating another account manager instance, uh, account manager B, and here notice that we have specified the from account as account B and to account as account A. So here for account manager A, from is A and to is B. For account manager B, from is B account and to account is account A. Okay, so we are reversing it. Um, and then we want to transfer 2000 from account B to account A, and we are 
uh, executing the trans this transfer method on account manager B on a new thread and T2 is the name given to that thread. We are starting both of the threads and we are uh, you know making the main thread wait until both of the threads complete and then we are printing this message main completed. Okay. Now what is going to happen now? This program is going to deadlock. Why? Look at this. When we call the transfer method, what is going to happen? Okay, keep in mind for account manager A, from account is account A and to account is account B. And for account manager B, from account is account B and to account is account A. Okay, and these two two methods are being executed on different threads, thread one and thread two. So we have got two threads here, thread one and thread two, and two resources, account A and account B. Okay, and then if you look at our account manager class so when we call the transfer method on thread one what's going to happen it's going to first lock account A which has got the ID of 101 and then that thread is going to sleep for you know one second and at the same time we have another thread running parallelly so that thread you know for the second thread that is account manager B you know we have the from account as account B and to account as account A so thread 2 is going to acquire a lock on account B okay and then that is going into the sleep okay for one second so at the moment the situation is thread 1 has got lock on account A and thread 2 has got lock on account B both of them will go into sleep and then once they wake up you know once they have um, tried to acquire a lock on two account you know the first thread you know it's trying to acquire lock on account B but the lock on account B is already held by thread 2 okay and similarly you know thread 2 wants a lock on account A you know where thread 1 is already holding a lock so obviously there is a deadlock let's actually look at that in action so I have the exact same program here so that's the account class and that is our account manager class and then this is our main method okay so let's go ahead and run this one and see what output we get so we should get this output main started and after that we don't have any console dot right line statements anywhere so nothing else will be printed you know this this code right here main completed will will never be reached so let's go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen look at that it says main started but then nothing happens the program is deadlocked there Let's actually prove that, you know, it's indeed getting locked right here. Okay, and to prove that, let's actually, you know, write some console.write line statements here. And to speed things up, I have already typed those console.write line statements. So let's copy that and paste that right here. So now if you recollect within the main method we have given names for the threads using the name property on the thread instance so what we are doing here we are saying thread dot current thread dot name so which will retrieve the name of the current thread that is executing this code so whether it is t1 or t2 we don't know so t1 for example t1 trying to acquire lock on so we are trying to acquire lock on from account so um, now from account object dot id dot to string so we are basically printing the id of the from account okay so after this statement is executed obviously we have you know one of the threads have acquired lock on the from account okay so let's just print a message stating so so whatever thread acquired lock on from account so here it is trying to acquire once this statement is executed it acquired lock on that thread and then we are going to make the next statement here is going to make the thread sleep so let's actually print that message as well so console dot right line you know thread whatever thread suspended for one second meaning that's going to sleep for one second and then you know the thread is back in action so it came back from sleep and then it's trying to acquire lock on to account okay so this statement will try to acquire lock on the to account 
okay and then we'll actually have another console dot write line statement here so console dot write line let's actually write you know this code will not be executed okay why is that that's because at this line we'll have a deadlock so it will not proceed to execute this piece of code right here okay so let's go ahead and run this and see if we get that output look at that main started and then first thread one came in so tree t1 thread t1 trying to acquire lock on 101 that's the from account right so within your main method if you actually look at that so the account a you know for account manager a from account is account a so 101 is the id so it's trying to acquire lock on 101 thread one it acquired lock on 101 t1 suspended for one second because it's going to sleep okay then look at that t2 thread 2 trying to acquire lock on 102 and then t2 acquired lock on 102 and t2 is suspended for one second and then both thread 1 and thread 2 are back in action now and they are trying to acquire lock on these account IDs where the other threads are actually holding the locks so that's why there is a deadlock and notice that this line is never printed you know this code will not be executed that line is not printed and main complete this line is not printed as well so this program is in a deadlock Okay, so in our next video, we'll discuss uh, you know options that are available to resolve you know these deadlocks. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.